the award-winning initiative. And this is rooted in identifying issues arising from digital preservation in a practical way and addressing them collectively. As part of the initiative, the opportunities presented by the use of platforms such as Teams and Zoom, with which we're now so familiar, um, have enabled proactive en engagement and facilitated connection across Wales. These platforms were used to deliver the Saving the Bits training programme, which provided a general introduction to digital preservation principles and practices for those in the cultural, education and public sectors in Wales. While another element of the initiative addressed the specific issue of remote deposit of digital content to the National Library of Wales, which is in the process of refinement. Uh, working with students at Aberystwyth University in a practical workshop, issues identified were then addressed to and improved uh, library processes. Uh, and through interactive en engagement across Wales, the programme has seen skills and knowledge have been built and underpinned by these new resources, community knowledge and training materials, which have been made freely available through the internet. So. Sally, I think you're going to drive the, the slides. Well, I think Ali's going to drive the slides. So Ali's going to drive the slides and you're going to speak and Gemma's going to speak. So I'll thank hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so yes, uh, thank you for that, that, that long introduction. It basically said the whole project, but you know, we'll give it a go. Tell you a bit more. So my name is Sally McInnes. I'm Head of Unique and Contemporary Content here at the National Library of Wales. And I'm also Chair of the Archives and Records Councils Wales Digital Preservation Group. Now, this group has been working collaboratively across Wales for probably over a decade um, to try and um, improve capacity and advocate for digital preservation with a limited amount of success, with some success uh, and, and areas not quite successful, but we'll talk about those in a minute. So that's me, and um, I'm joined today by Gemma Evans, who is our Archives and Records Council Wales Digital Support Officer, and her um, contribution will talk about sort of Moving on from this project, I'll talk about um, the gap that this project um, revealed and how Gemma is effectively plugging that gap. So a bit of background, as I said, we have be working to uh, look at digital preservation. And one of the things we've done, of course, is look at strategies. We've got a national uh, digital preservation policy on the Archives Web's, uh, Wales website. And we've got lots of resources on the Archives Wales website. But we've also developed um, a workflow based on Archivematica. So, oh, you can carry on, Ellie, it's fine. You can move if you want. Um, Archivematica. And Archivematica, as you may know, is the open source um, digital preservation uh, solution created by Archivum. Um, and we've been using Archivematica before it became um, actually fully uh, released. We had a beta release and we had one of the Archivematica developers at Aberystwyth on the day when we had a, 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 a tornado which was very exciting which added to all the excitement um, and we've been using uh, Archivematica and, and developing it ever since. So it came out of the box but we uh, have developed it so that organisations, ARCU members that include um, local authority archive services, uh, universities and national institutions can have um, data their their end digital data photographs um, word documents pdfs they can upload it through a uh, video into the library's archivematica hosted instance you can run through all the uh, digital preservation activities all the um, checksumming or the verification um, fixity through Archivematica, and then it is held. Um, it is managed by Fedora, the uh, open again open source Fedora, which uh, looks at the metadata, metadata uh, manages the um, access copies. But the trusted copy is held in the uh, the Black Pearl Digital Archive. I do like the name Black Pearl; it reminds me of um, Raiders of the Caribbean or whatever. So that's how it works. So and when um, the uh, partners have put content through Archivematica, what they get back is a URL or um, a stem which they can use in their own catalog. So it looks as though the content is actually held in their, uh, their institution, but actually it's held in the library with a link to their catalog seamlessly. So it sounds great, doesn't it? So all the work that you need to do um, on 
I'm going to fix the checking and everything is done through Archivematic for you. And you get um, a copy and get a, a link to the trusty copy back. But there were issues, issues uh, with regards to people um, not wanting to have their content outside of their own institution. We did try using the cloud that wasn't particularly successful. Issues with regards to um, rights, issues with regards to the infrastructure, issues with regards to who was actually going to pay for it. Because although the library was um, providing the infrastructure, it, it, if it were used as a service, there would have to be contributions um, externally. And this was also an issue and it was difficult to Although creating a number of business cases, difficult to actually um, get that take up from um, very cash strapped um, organizations. Anyway, but the the, the um, workflow was there and it was operational and we were very keen to get it to be used to advocate for it. But we also realized that the, um, the capacity in Wales isn't just um, with obviously within the ARCU members, but with lots of other organisations, cultural services um, organisations across Wales. And when um, we had the digital transformation whereby uh, things like Zoom and Teams became very widespread and very, um, very widely used, we saw the opportunity to spread those skills based on our experience um, to other members um, across Wales. So we opened it up and we created what was called the Saving the Bits programme, which was open to everybody. And um, it was um, attended by over a hundred people. We had six sessions from the library <coughs> and all the resources were placed in on the Archives Wales site, which you'll see there. And we had um, representatives from, from lots of different organisations across Wales. Now, I think the best thing for me to do is to save the next slide and show you show you the uh, the the film that we created. The aim of this project was to extend digital preservation skills and knowledge through collaboration and co-creation. Led by staff at the National Library of Wales, it used Teams platform to engage interactively with a wide audience in the archives, library, museum, academic, and other public sectors across Wales. It was rooted in promoted learning through doing, solving issues collaboratively and learning together and had two strands, the Saving the Bits programme and Co-Creation Digital Acquisition Workshop. The Saving the Bits programme aimed to increase digital preservation capacity within the cultural For some reason, it seems to have stopped. It's fine. You can go back and you can watch it on. It's on the DPC website. We have, yeah, it's a cool animation as well. So you should... It is a very cool animation, <laughs> but uh, technology always lets us down. But um, <clears throat> the team that um, was based at the library, which um, uh, delivered this train team, included people who had specialisms in um, digital archives. There's a digital archivist there. There was somebody who knew um, an awful lot about IIIF and crowdsourcing. There was someone who was basically developing all the um, rock documentation and rights for digital access. There was our um, archive matica developer, very experienced, who'd been doing it for the library for many years. And there was somebody who understood about the storage side and how it all had to interact. So, as you know, if you do something with one part of a, a thing, such as archive matica, it has impact on things like Fedora, the digital archive, so uh, storage space what type of storage systems you use. So all that came from um, the library. And this, the sessions were very interactive. There's a lot of knowledge and experience um, across Wales. So because it was um, able to be done through you know, uh, Teams, uh, it, people could ask questions, they could interact, they could stop, they could say, oh, we can do this. So we did succeed in, in developing um, the, the knowledge and experience and all the um, resources we put on the Archives Wales site. So you'd have templates for metadata creation, um, sample types of deposit agreements, donation agreements, um, talk about the, the list of preferred file formats. We tried to put everything up there. Admittedly, a lot of it we did steal. There's no, I'm not going to lie. We did use the stuff that's out there. DPC, we used a lot of resources from DPC, the TNA, um, 
I thought it's out there to be used, so use it. But what we did do, um, which was a little bit different um, to other things, we, we used alternative approaches. I mentioned the issues that we'd had with the uptake of Archivematica. We love Archivematica, we've been using it here, but it has issues in terms of external um, implementation. So with the workflow, we showed how you could do things with Archivematica and how easy that was, or without Archivematica using um, things like AVG um, or the virus testing, the software that you can download, freely available software that you can download, and you can have um, a standalone system unconnected from the, the main system, so you can bring things in carefully without you know, infecting the rest of your collections. Um, you can have TerraCopy, you can have um, Droid. So you could do it the easy way, packaged up in Archivematica, or the more standalone way. So we had those two um, approaches. And because we were doing them in tandem, we found things like there was a there was a TIFF that we had, which um, was went through the manual system, the checks, fine, but Archivematica didn't like it. So we had to go through and find that out. And I wrote a blog about this called the Iffy Tiffy, which I must admit I was quite proud of the name of. So it was probably the best thing about the blog, but um, which the DPC Fair Play have um, published. But it is interesting, those two approaches side by side. I, and I'm going to leave it there about that because Gemma's going to talk about um, the bundles in a minute. We call them startup bundles. But the other thing we did was a co-creation uh, workshop with um, students at the University of Wales Aberystwyth who were on the digital preservation course. And we wanted to test the um, documentation and the workflow that we'd developed for digital ingest. We thought it worked, but you know, you, you've got to test it on people. Um, we thought it was fine. We thought our guidelines were very clear and um, that nobody could ever get anything wrong. But of course, you, you don't uh, foresee a couple of things like uh, specifying high, uh, lowercase and uppercase in title things, specifying that the name of the metadata folder should be different from the name of the source folder. And you should also, and this is a, a something I really, you should really warn your IT department if you're expecting a download of 15 um, uh, web transfer, because we, we did web transfer in the end, we didn't use PWO through into this system. They were not very happy. I think we actually crashed the whole library site, but that's just a minor point. Just uh, so, so that, that, but these, 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 so we went back and we redid the guidelines and with the understanding they have to be very clear um, and, and things um, have to have data protocols, you have to file names and everything's fine. So this is where we get to Gemma. Hello, Gemma. So this is where Gemma. Hello. So we'd advocated for, as I said, um, the, the archivematic approach or the non-archivematic approach. So we were telling people what you need, you need a standalone system, you need to uh, have the software downloaded into the system, you need to be able to have a, a power supply, this un uninterruptible power supply, uh, you need to have a, a tariff copy, a thing that copies the data without it. So we call these startup bundles, you've got to have these. and. Um, local authorities and other organizations, well, local authorities didn't have the um, the ability at the moment at that moment to procure them. So we went, because we'd um, successfully won in the DPC, for which I'm very grateful, we could go to the, we could go to Welsh Government and say, look, we've got an award-winning programme here um, and there's been a need that's been identified in order to really kickstart digital preservation in a practical way, as opposed to strategic, as I said, we've already got policies and things, um, we really um, need to be able to procure bundles, startup bundles, which have all those elements that you need for local authorities. So they can actually start doing the stuff that we've been telling them about and which for which we won, won an award. And guess what? We got the money. And now I'm going to pass you over to Gemma, who is going to take over. Thank you very much, Sally. Um, I hope everybody can um, hear me OK. Uh, I'm joining you. Uh, this afternoon from sunny West Glamorgan Archive Service, where we're currently in the process of installing um, one of the startup bundles uh, that Sally's mentioned that I'm going to tell you about um, now. So um, as, as Sally's um, introduced, um, we, following the Saving the Bits training programme, Welsh Government funded the acquisition of uh, digital ingest workstations uh, for local authority archive services throughout Wales, which we have termed the Kickstart Cymru project. 
uh, the workstations consist of a package of hardware and software, which are mainly designed to support services in the offline ingest of digital records um, from external media devices, such as a USB stick, uh, floppy disk drive or, or CD into the workstation and thence onto an external hard drive so that everything can be done offline. Um, could I have the next slide, please, Ellie? That's OK. Thank you. Um, so they aim to support the safe ingest of digital materials, um, as well as performing appraisal and validation steps on ingest and producing metadata reports to evidence the steps that have been taken. Um, while Welsh Government have funded the acquisition of the workstations, the National Library is responsible for setting up the hardware and software for each bundle and also for distributing them to each local authority archive services. And then once we've um, delivered them, they belong to the archive service in question. So they, they will be responsible for any sort of maintenance uh, and upkeep in the future. Um, we are currently in the process of rolling out the bundles across all 13 uh, local authority archive services in Wales. Um, and on this slide here, you can see um, a diagram which shows you the general uh, setup of each bundle. So we're supplying each service with a PC together with a monitor, keyboard and mouse, as you'd expect. Um, and we've added 16 um, gig of extra RAM to each PC to hopefully future proof them slightly in terms of capacity. Um, we're also ex supplying an external hard drive, which is configured to RAID level one. So the data is mirrored um, across the two hard drive disks to help provide that extra layer of protection. So there is a single disk failure tolerance um, on, on the hard disk there. Uh, as Sally mentioned, we're also supplying an uninterruptible power supply. So the monitor, um, if you can click again, Ellie. I think it should show you the wiring <laughs> that tells you um, the PC, the monitor um, and the RAID external storage drive are all powered by the UPS, which should help them uh, in the event that there are any power cuts, which we hope that there won't be. <laughs> um, but um, it will also protect uh, the equipment against power surges. And then finally, we also are supplying a USB, USB write blocker um, for use in ingesting digital materials, obviously from a USB stick or USB connected um, external uh, media device. Um, so the workstation is designed to be used entirely offline during the transfer process, um, but some software, in particular virus definitions, will obviously need to be updated from time to time, and services will either be using their Wi-Fi or LAN um, to connect them for this purpose, and quite a lot of services are opting to use um, the guest Wi-Fi if they, if they don't want to put the workstation um, on their network. Um, if we could have the next slide, please, Ellie. Um, this shows you a photo of one of the bundles as it's already been installed um, in Keradigian archives, uh, where we spun down the road from the National Library uh, a few weeks ago to, for our first sort of trial setup, which went very well. Um, this bundle is actually installed in a corner of the search room uh, in this case, although it's meant to be used by staff. So <laughs> I think it's got a sign on it saying, uh, please don't use this machine uh, because it is, is next to where the, where the researchers will be sitting. Um, and last week I visited um, the service again to run through a trial ingest of some MP3 audio files according to our workflow, um, which I'm pleased to say was very successful. So that um, kit has already been um, used to, to transfer some material successfully. Uh, if you can have the next slide, Ellie. Please, thank you. Um, so this is um, a diagram which outlines our suggested digital preservation ingest workflow um, and some of the associated software used in it. Um, it's based on the workflow used in the Saving the Bits training program um, with a couple of minor changes. So if you can, I'm not sure how visible that is, but if you can follow the process along, essentially, once the external storage medium has been connected to the PC, it's obviously first scanned for viruses. We've installed AVG antivirus for that purpose, uh, copied using TerraCopy, to, um, which will also generate a checksum. Um, Ideally, the materials will already have been uh, transferred with a, a checksum generated by, by the depositor, but as we know, that, that might not be the case. So that might be the first point at which the checksum is generated. Um, we've also installed Droid for file format identification and checksum verification, and Joe for file format validation. Um, because we don't want to put any um, proprietary, well, we don't want to put any software on the machines that are going to tie services to subscriptions in the future. We've uh, downloaded LibreOffice um, for use rather than um, a commercial uh, alternative. 
And we've also downloaded exactly so that services have that available if they want to bag data and metadata together, either on ingest or an onward transfer. Um, so once the steps in that workflow are complete, um, the metadata reports generated by the software have been saved. We recommend transferring them together uh, to the external hard drive, um, as well as sav saving a separate copy of the metadata um, into their records on the PC or elsewhere on the services network. Um, some services might now or in the future have additional um, storage uh, in place, including stat cloud based storage, um, and that would obviously require uh, temporarily connecting them to their network once the materials have been ingested safely and virus scanned. Um, the fact that the software was required to be freely available meant we did have to make some adjustments to the workflow as it was designed um, for the Saving the Bits training programme in particular because, as far as we are aware, AVP fixity is no longer um, provided for free. Um, so we were unable to supply that on the machines. Um, and so we do need to think about how fixity checking can be performed in the future without paying for software to automate that process, um, because at the moment we're really looking at advising services to manually generate checksums um, using Droid or other software um, to, to check the checksums that have been generated on ingest. But that is obviously sort of a more time consuming um, process. So that that is one um, issue that, that, that we are going to have to consider. Um, and Ellie, could I have the next slide? Uh, just move on quickly to explain where we're at sort of in the rollout uh, process at the moment. Um, so this is a map of the bundles, uh, map of the services which the bundles are being distributed to um, and where we're traveling over the next couple of months to complete the bundle rollout. Uh, I've been Has Gemma frozen for everybody or just me? Yes, she has frozen. She has. Oh, no, we've lost her. And we'll be visiting. Oh, um, oh sorry. We lost Have you I Gemma lost you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, continue, continue. Okay. Is it, is it okay? I'll start again on the slide about the map. Is that okay? I'm not sure where you, where you lost me there. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this is a map um, of the services where the bundles are being distributed to. Um, and where we'll be traveling over the next couple of months. Um, I'm visiting um, services with my colleague Paul McCann from the National Library. Um, we've already visited Keradigian, which is next to the red dot on the map, which tells you where the National Library is. Um, we've visited Conwy, Harden, Wrexham. This morning we're in West Glamorgan. Um, we're going over to Glamorgan Archives in Cardiff tomorrow and then Gwent. Um, then we've got another one or two before Christmas and then some more in the new year. But we hope to be wrapped up sort of um, early um, in the new year. And then post rollout um, as part of the project, if you could move on to the next slide, Ali. Thank you. Um, so part of the um, sort of wrap up of the project is going to be looking at mapping the activities in the workflow um, that I've just shown to digital preservation self-assessment standards, including um, the NDSA levels and DPC RAM in particular. Um, so we're looking at the NDSA levels from the perspective of helping archive services to um, apply for accreditation or re-accreditation in the future, um, because obviously that's one, of, that's one of the elements of accreditation. Um, obviously, the workflow focused as it is on the practicalities of ingest and storage is not going to um, cover everything in either standard. Um, so I think, for example, it will likely be more easily mapped to the service capabilities than the organizational capabilities elements of DPC RAM. So acquisition, transfer and ingest in particular, but um, potentially also bitstream preservation. Um, but possibly not the organizational capabilities, which obviously services will need more um, documentation um, and other policies to support that. Um, and then for the NDSA levels, it would be great if we can support services through um, the bundles who haven't yet attained um, level one, potentially, or who haven't done a self-assessment um, to be able to attain that level, ideally um, level two. Um, but some elements there, such as the metadata function, additional guidance, again, will be needed because the workflow, the hardware and the software we've supplied won't, won't cover everything in there on its own. Um, so an, another element will be sort of looking at how we can uh, guide services to um, use their policies, documentation um, and metadata reports to essentially evidence that the steps that they're taking um, to help them um, in uh, doing self-assessments in the future. 
Um, so I think that's my uh, last part on uh, future steps, and I'll hand back to Sally to um, wrap up our, the rest of our future plans. Thanks. If Sally can unmute her computer. Thank you, Gemma. That was that was great. Uh, really, um, really good. And another thing we're going to be doing is continuing the training, um, providing uh, documentation for how you use the um, bundles. Although we have created videos, there are videos for each stage of the bundles um, on the Archives Wales site. Uh, the feedback that we'd had, that Gemma has had from the services, that they'd want um, even more documentation, really. I think they, want, they want screenshots. They want to know, what do we do next? What do we do next? Which is great, and we'll be doing that. So we'll be doing some more sessions on that. We hope that um, once we've got the bundles in place and they're working successfully, um, that the, the people who have the bundles will give their knowledge as well, the way they've used it, how they've implemented it, what works for them, and, and create um, a community again of, of, of users creating capacity. So that's basically the bundles with the student workshops. Um, it's probably going to be, it's, it's, it's an annual thing that we work with the students. Um, they, <clears throat> their knowledge and experience is great for us and helping us to look at our way that we um, interact with our stakeholders and how um, how they use it. One element that we really do want to concentrate on is um, access in the reading room to digital content. This is something that we're really looking at now. And again, it will be added to our training program. But when you come in, what you access, how you access, um, it aligns with all the, the accreditation access protocols and everything. And I have to say at the National Library, we haven't um, gone as far as that I would have liked. So that's going to be a priority. Uh, another thing that's come out of um, the, the feedback has been we've we've helped, we've encouraged, we've supported people to create um, digital preservation strategies. So as I said, there's a national digital preservation policy that should be updated actually because it was written a few years ago. But we've um, said that there should be a strategy for their uh, locally um, tailored strategy, and we've assisted with that. And issues such as uh, how do you transfer stuff effectively, um, issues with regard to um, the, the rights with um, external deposit have come out. So that we're going to be doing more training on that, on the policy areas and obviously the practical areas. And because we because we won the DPC award, I had a bit of money. They gave me a bit of money and something that I've always wanted to do that we haven't been able to do is create just a, a, a film because when in the library obviously we're bilingual and everything has to be subtitled in English and Welsh and um, it was outside of the capacity of, your, of, of our team to, to create a video so we now have created a video um, I went externally um, and a great video about just basically what we do in the library and how we have um, uh, got the black pearl how we use fedora it's just a very general thing so thanks to the dpc um, we were able to do that in english and welsh so it's on our youtube site if you're interested so i think that's more or less everything i wanted to say thank you very much for listening and uh, over to you sarah thank you sally thanks uh, and to you as well Gemma. um i think a round of applause is in order uh, for you both as well and um for the, an excellent program and it seems like you've since we last spoke, I mean, it was only September, like things have just leapt on, haven't they, in terms of what you've been able to do. And that's that's so encouraging and so positive. I'm so, so glad. Um, what I'd like is, if you don't mind, <laughs> is for you to keep us posted on how that rollout goes and how, you know, all of the, you know, well, all, the whole experience, really, I think we'd be, we'd be delighted to hear back from you maybe in a year's time or however long, you know, once it's all embedded. Um, so we can learn from that because I think we certainly write. We certainly write you a blog as well. Today brilliant. Today. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think it's something that, like, maybe for other local authorities or maybe others that have sort of like a hub and spoke kind of mm -hmm. um, setup could sort of adopt. And and I think yeah, I, I think it'd be so interesting. Um, I think you we so I'm I'm, jump, I'm jumping ahead to what's next in the DPC calendar the various things but on my radar are the workflow webinars and I think you've already offered to share the workflow that Gemma showed 
uh, as part of that so others can can see it there as well that'd be really interesting so anyway i'm rabbiting on as usual uh, would anybody like to ask a question and if you'd like to be sort of stacking up questions for any of the others as well as we wrap up as we come towards the hour just shout up You can ask a technical question because I think Paul McCann is also here lurking. Oh, brilliant. Oh, there we go. No technical <laughs> questions then, thanks. <laughs> Paul McCann's not here. <laughs> I've got a question, but I don't want to hug, hug all the questions because I've already asked lots, but um, I'll maybe kick things off. Um, well, I suppose a comment as well to begin with. Um, Sally, you're, you're almost apologetic um, about reusing what's already out there, but I think Apologies only required if you reinvent the wheel. You know, this is this is digital preservation good practice and um, it's fantastic work that you guys have been doing. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I just had a question, um, not on the technical side, the, the other end of the scale almost, about we've obviously done so much collaboration and community building here. And I just wondered how much of a challenge that was and how, how you managed to engage so successfully with so many different organisations. So <clears throat> it's a good question. Um, with the Archives and Records Council Wales, that's been established for a long time and includes representatives from all the local authority. Um, so they're a kind of a captive audience, Paul, you know, you've got those. Um, but with the Digital Preservation Group, it includes not just um, the heads of service, but um, the practitioners as well. So we, so we had those and <clears throat> we've been working as like, it's one of the aims of the RQ uh, Digital Preservation work every year. So it's one of the aims, so that's, that's done. With the, the greater community, um, <clears throat> we, we basically advertised on the Archives Wales site. Um, we, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how we did get them, to be honest. No. <laughs> but yeah, I think we just um, threw advertisement and saying it was on, um, just, and then when, when people hear, they pass on to other people. And, uh, uh, and if, uh, if DPC members, they've seen it there. So uh, yes, we did get a lot of people outside of ARCU. Um, through hearsay and through um, through just you know hearing about it, I think Gemma, do you know? You probably don't know. It's before your time. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I was going to say I don't know if we tweeted anything. If um, Vicky Jones, who's a sort of our, our comms chief, might have also uh, mm -hmm. sort of distributed it on social media, um, possibly as well. But yeah, um, either way, it's very successful. <laughs> Brilliant to hear that the, the, the pull, the draw of digital preservation is just naturally happening. There. <laughs> fantastic. We, we, we made it very sexy, Paul. That's what it was. <laughs> no, um, as I said, and because people from the community were there, they gave their knowledge and experience as well. So that grew, grew the community and brought other people in. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a testament to that community that you've been building for, for many years, as you, as you said yes, to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, it was called the Community for the Willing. I don't know if you, Sarah, maybe remembers this. We did, um, we tried for the Digital Preservation Wars, uh, Wars, Wars, Awards many years ago, and we had a name of a project called The Cow and the Cloud. So with that was the Community for the Willing and um, Cloud, and again, based on Archivematica. We didn't win, but we were shortlisted. But, you know, so that, yes, we had the community sprint from there. Excellent. 